Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at connecting Bluetooth controllers to RetroPie. I'm using RetroPie 3.8.1 and some of these features are not yet in that version but I'll show you how to update and get them in there. I'm really excited about this new feature that's been added about using Bluetooth. Specifically also it helps with the 8BitD controllers and if you're not familiar with 8BitD they're probably uh, arguably the best retro Bluetooth controller that you can get at the moment. The style of them is geared for that sort of 80s, 90s, 8-bit, 16-bit experience, but they're also really solidly made, high quality and Bluetooth, so they're really suitable for this type of environment where we're using RetroPie here on a Raspberry Pi. Now, the features found in this are extra to what's been available before, so there's um, new things that you can do to make sure that the controller always boots um, or rather always connects on boot, or maybe if it disconnects during the session, uh, maybe it's been idle too long and it's easy to wake and reconnect. So these are, these are big steps really, although they sort of in themselves aren't necessarily massive, it, it really helps to be able to quickly and easily get your 8-bit um, do or the Bluetooth controller up and running quickly. So um, Buzz, the main developer for RetroPie, has made these changes recently over the past week. It's currently 14th of August, no, 14th of June uh, 2016 and um, these are available now and I'll show you how to configure it and it should make everything much easier. As you may have noticed in the wiki at the moment, the instructions for connecting 8-bit do controllers in places they're a bit hacky because it's well this might work for you um, if you try it this way it might reconnect sometimes it's it, it works but it's a bit of a faff to get together and now it's all built in anyway this is 3.8.1 it's booted up it's detected I've got a keyboard plugged in and I've got a iBuffer USB controller my um, FC30 Pro that I'm going to test in a minute isn't turned on, so obviously that's not connected at all yet. So the gamepad it's detected is my USB one, and I'm just going to configure that so I can use Emulation Station. Okay, up, down. And then when we've got the Bluetooth controller working, we can configure Emulation Station to see that as a separate controller as well. And when this is rolled into um, an image of uh, RetroPie, I'll probably update the wiki um, so everyone can see how that um, how that change happens. Okay, and I'll probably go into the config files a bit as well. But at the moment, this is really just getting it up and running. Okay, so we're in Emulation Station, and first thing we're going to do is update the script. So if we go to the RetroPie menu and choose RetroPie Setup. Like I say, this is the script and, and everything else in RetroPie that is 3.8.1. I've built it from an image rather than using Raspbian and then installing RetroPie on top. So because the features we want are very recent and they're not yet in 3.8.2 or whatever the next version might be, um, I'm going to manually update it. And you can do that down here, update RetroPie setup script, hit OK. Obviously the Pi's got to have a network connection, so it goes off and grabs this and it's done it. And now you notice a different layout. So that's been updated and uh, ready to use the new feature found in the Bluetooth menu. So what I'm going to do is go into Setup and Tools. Actually, if I cancel that, you can also see the other way of getting in here. So I've exited that and at the top there, you've got a menu that goes straight into that Bluetooth section. But it's the same, however you want to get in there, it's the same feature. So now that we've updated the script, in Bluetooth, and obviously in the future you probably won't have to update the script because it, this feature will already be there. Now previously you wouldn't have these last three options, it would only show the top three. So these bottom three are new. Um, you've got the setup a UDEV rule for the joypad, required for joypads uh, from 8BitDo. So if you've got an 8BitDo joypad, when Emulation Station boots it won't see that joypad to connect to if you don't have this configuration file. Now this is what's mentioned in the wiki to do manually at the moment, but this automatically does it for you. So once you've um, registered your controller, uh, you can automatically create this file. And just a point of um, definition, there is often somebody will say pair when they mean connect and connect when they mean pair. Pair is just done once effectively to tell the um, Raspberry Pi that it can it recognises and pairs to the controller. 
Whereas connect is what it does every time it starts up. It's got to reconnect to that um, to that device. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, and like I say, all I've got plugged in is a USB joypad and a keyboard at the moment. So the Bluetooth element's built in, in my example, or built into the Pi. Okay, so if I do, if I check remove Bluetooth device or display, it should get nothing at the minute because I haven't got any Bluetooth connect Bluetooth devices connected, and display registered. There's nothing. Okay, so now I'm going to choose to register and connect to Bluetooth device. So first, I'm going to I'm using a FC30 Pro, and the firmware version on it is 1.68, and it shouldn't make too much difference with a different firmware. But it's worth checking if if any of this doesn't work for you, and um, check out what your firmware is. Although admittedly, you might have a completely different controller anyway, so the firmware version would differ by that as well. But that's what I'm I'm using in this example, and you can see what they look like on the 8BitD website. Okay, so I'm holding down the, the power button, and now my controller is flashing, looking to pair. And I'm going to choose this top option, register. And it takes a moment, as a bit of a think, see what's there. And I probably recognise the. Okay, so here, this is the MAC address of the device that it's found. Now I know that's not the MAC address of my controller. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit cancel there. And I'm going to turn the controller off a second. And I'm going to turn it back on. And I'm going to choose that register again, but this time I'm going to tap a couple of um, buttons like X and Y on the controller. And I've just found that it might not be there. It shows up now. I don't know if that's why it does it, but it does seem to work for me. Just tap a couple of buttons and it seems to be better at detecting it. And I know this top address is the MAC address of my controller, so I say OK there. And on this point I just choose number one as it says above, which just um, makes it connect and it says successfully registered and connected and I know it's connected because as soon as that message popped up I've got a blue solid LED light on my controller so I know that's connected. So that's how easy it is to connect to your um, controller. That should work pretty straightforward. Okay, now if I look at display registered you should see it's there. You can see that I've got 8-bit DFC30 Pro and it's connected. Okay. Now, I know that when I restart, Emulation Station still won't see this unless I have the config file. And I can do that by choosing this line. So I'm just going to create that config file automatically. And I want to create it for my FC30 Pro. Okay, so it's now it's said that, and it's also told you the file that it's created that rule in. So that's all ready. Please reboot for the config to take effect. Okay, we'll do that in a second. Okay, now... Um, I'm going to skip that option for the moment, but this one, Configure Bluetooth Connect Mode. Now I've tried this earlier today and, and it's still behaving in the way that even though I've configured everything correctly, when I restart, my setup won't automatically reconnect to the Bluetooth controller. And I'm not sure why that is because it should, but and other devices do, but this doesn't automatically connect, but we've got options in this section to make it automatically reconnect. Um, I'll go in and check that in a second but what, what I was going to say is some people have found that it works for them but I think where it works might be if somebody starts with a Raspbian installation a standard Raspbian installation and then installs RetroPy on top of that they seem to sometimes get slightly different results but the point is now it works regardless so if you use the image like I am here I'm using the image of RetroPy 3.8.1 it should just work so default is as is, which doesn't work for me. The default won't reconnect automatically when I reboot the Pi. So if I go into that menu, I've got three options. Leave as it is, default, which might work for you. You should always try that one first, probably, without changing anything else. Then you've got boot, and that, that effectively automates the, the um, hacky wiki instructions at the moment to automatically boot. It kind of does the same thing, but in a much better way. So this is the way to do it. And I've tested it, it works fine. Um, it will automatically connect at boot and you know it connects because you get the blue solid light. But then separately, this background one, the background option is effectively boot and background. So it also does the boot. So choosing this op option will connect on boot, but it will also, about every 10 seconds or so, scan to see if it can see the controller, which means that if you're playing the game or you've left your controller idle and it's dropped the connection, 
having chosen this option will automatically reconnect it. So maybe you turn your, um, maybe if you keep the Pi on for a couple of days, but you've turned your Bluetooth controller off, when you turn your Bluetooth controller back on, it will automatically reconnect. So that's probably the best option. Um, there's a chance that the constant scan, or not constant scanning, but there's a chance that the regular scanning might get in the way of some other processes. But I've given it a um, couple hours sort of solid go and I haven't found any issues. So it doesn't seem to um, be a problem at all. And this just makes it so much more reliable to use Bluetooth controllers and so much easier and quicker to configure them. I think it's a fantastic change that I think it'll help a lot of people. So do try this one out. Um, I'm gonna go with background. So I choose background. That's written a couple of files. So now all I've got to do is restart. So I'll do that by canceling that. And on this menu, I'm going to quit and restart the system. Okay, so I'll pause it there. Okay, so I'm booting back up. I turn the controller on just as the uh, Pi started to boot. And it's just connected now. So I've got a solid light. It's automatically um, done that. And so effectively, Emulation Station will be able to see this as well because we did that configuration file. And I'm automatically in because my USB controller is already configured anyway. But what we should see, um, because this is this controller is connected, if I press start and configure input, so I'm using my USB existing controller to do this, or you could use your keyboard, and now I've got two gamepads detected. I've got my USB one and the Bluetooth one, which just connected on boot up there. And I'm gonna hold the button as it does here. I'm gonna configure it, so just hold that, run down these, Left top, right top didn't configure again. Anyway, ignore that. Uh, left thumb. Okay, so now that's configured. Um, all I'm using now, and you'll have to take my word for it, is just the Bluetooth controller. I've put the USB to one side, and it's quite happy controlling this. And I've also, separately, I have gone into a game. Actually, I could do it now. Bear with me one moment, and I'll just show you it working and being detected in a particular game. Okay, RetroPi, ROMs. Let's go Mega Drive. And let's go uh, Streets of Rage, it's got a few buttons to test there. Okay, so now I've done that, I'm just going to restart Emulation Station, which should be quit and restart Emulation Station. For it to see that wrong, I've just copied across. And now, get rid of that a sec. Okay, there we go, Mega Drive. And I'm selecting it, and you should see in the bottom left corner a little yellow bit of text showing the controllers. So I've got their 8 bit D and USB um, controller. So now we're in there, if I press start, okay, so I'm using the 8 bit D. I've got left, right, up, down, jump, kick, so the buttons are mapped correctly, starts doing the pause, so everything's working right there, and the hotkeys also work, so if I quit out of this, select start, that goes back. I probably need to, um, as you saw when I was configuring it, the 8-bit DSC30 Pro has got four shoulder buttons, basically. Um, the first two always detect fine, but I always get a problem with those inner two. But I can man you can manually fix that in the controller file anyway, but I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, now separately, again, rather than me film this part, if I just describe it, currently the controller is connected absolutely fine on the FC30 Pro, it kind of glows blue. I'm going to turn it off, just hold down that. There. There's no indication that it's lost it on the screen, but um, if I press up and down, it's or B, you know, it's not doing anything, so it's turned off, completely off, um, so I can't control emulation station with this controller now. But if I just turn it back on now, I'm powering it up now, okay, it's flashing blue because it's trying to um, pair or find something to connect to. 
Um, I still can't use it because that isn't connected. It's just still flashing blue, trying to see if it can see anything to work with. And what should be happening in the background is there, I'm now connected. So if I press back, it's working again. So I didn't have to do anything. And I think that's a really solid and reliable way to link these controllers now. And as you saw in the menu system, really quick and easy to do. If we go back in there, again, I'm using the 8-bit D now in Bluetooth. So we've got the register and connect option. Hmm, actually, I think it's taken the, because I've got a USB, I think it's got priority there. So I'm using my USB controller here. Um, so you can register and connect your new devices. You can remove one if you have already connect, um, paired it. So you can remove that pair. Um, you can see what's currently connected. So if I go in there again, I can see that my 8BitD F30 Pro is connected. Um, I set up UDEV rule. You only have to do that once per um, controller. So I don't need to add any more there. I can connect now to all registered. So I suppose if I've got a few, that sort of like um, automatically does the lot, but I don't need to do that. And then this one, I really, really like this because it works so well. You can go to default and um, behave as normal. Go for boot to make sure it always reconnects once on startup or boot background, which is the boot includes the boot option as well. And uh, we'll automatically scan for that controller should you lose the connection. And that's it. Um, I think that's one of the biggest steps forward for controllers in RetroPie in ages. It's an absolutely fantastic change. Um, I'd recommend you try out whether it, uh, whatever Bluetooth device you've got or an 8-bit D one. Um, give them a go. Try that out. If you've got any questions, put them in the um, comments and I'll try to help. But hopefully that's made it a lot easier for everyone. So thanks very much to all the development that goes on with RetroPie. Cheers.